Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial how to model this organic bench in Shaper 3D. In this process video I will start and run you through everything by bringing in first a reference image to establish scale and then we will create all the necessary sketches to create our lofted body you see here and then with more direct modeling we will then end up with this beautiful shape. Before we get started, I would like to take a moment and talk about the process of form development. So this is the final design you saw. When I zoom out a little bit and turn on all this, you will see actually the whole evolution of this design. Here, this is the position where I started. And the reason why I'm talking about this at the beginning is just to make you understand that when you have an idea and you start sketching something down, things might work out differently. And it's a really good practice at the beginning to very loosely explore proportion and shapes before we actually go into more time-consuming direct modeling to add all the details. So this is the first piece I made, kind of like a backrest, then the left and side ends. And I felt like the, the back rest, more on the lumbar support, wasn't necessarily really that good. Then I made it a little bit thicker, made the sides bigger, increased actually the height of the back rest, created an interesting cavity. Instead of uh, here in this version, three sketches, we have four sketches. So this is also like a technical uh, process to turn off your brain and simply make sketches, create models, and then see what do you actually figure out? Is there something interesting I could work with? At one point, then also here, I decided to maybe make the backrest a little bit wider till to the end. Then I came back to something similar at the beginning with a backrest that is not very high, but closer and the sides also being a little bit lower. And then after I decided that this is the design I would like to go forward, then I decided that at this point now is the right moment to add all the additional details in. With this covered, let's go ahead and start working on creating our own bench. First, let's set the unit system to inches. The shared reference image for the pose is dimensioned in inches. And if you're more familiar with the metric system, don't worry, simply follow this process I show. Afterwards, you can simply switch back the scene directly into metric again. Also have actually all the snapping targets turned on. Very good. Then upper left corner, let's go to import and then navigate to where you have the two images downloaded. I have here sitting leaning back and forward. I will use leaning back. There we are, very good. This image I can bring up a little bit, position it somewhere here, and I try to line up the ground line a little bit with my ground here. I'm also in a right view, as you can see. This image we can lower a little bit in the opacity, click done, okay. Now I need to scale this image. To scale is actually very easy, the process. I will simply draw somewhere a line and this line should be 18 inches. So you can see the image is actually way too big. And this line should start from the ground. And if I would like to, I can also make a horizontal line. So now to scale this image, go to transform, scale, select the image, and then with the pencil, move the scale widget to the beginning of the line. And then with the pencil, we swipe down and scale it. You can also type into the, vel um, the field here to type in a custom value. There we are, very good. I will move the figure a little bit more to the side to center the seating area more on the scene remove the sketch we had, and there we are. Beautiful, great. 
So now I can plan on my sketches. I go to sketch and go to spline. The best spline type here right now to use is actually control point. And then I will start at the bottom, draw, and then I press, go up, press, go to the center, press to the right, press to the bottom, press and release the pen right at the beginning. So now I have a nice closed shape. The control point spline is actually really good because I can select these individual points and move them around as you can see and massage the shape of this curve. I can bring this a little bit to here. I would like to add a backrest. I need to add a seeding. Okay, and then this can go up, this can go down. This can go up, this can go further. Very good. So there you can see how slowly I'm sculpting actually the spline into the shape I'm looking for. But you might notice that I'm not really am very successful in capturing the shape or creating hard enough corners. And at the same time, also being able to perfectly follow the curvature and the ground. The bottom one I would like here to be more flat. And here I would like this to follow a little bit more. And the backrest I would like to be a little bit higher there. Now, now this is too round here. So what's actually the solution to this problem? I might actually simply need to add more points. Currently I work with six. Maybe I need to have eight or 10. For example, here I need two points, here I need one more point, maybe here I need one more point. Okay, so I will delete this. Let's create a sketch again. And I start down here and press and press. Oops, I release my pen one more time. There is there, two here, one down, one in there. You can actually very easily simply add more points because we can later simply remove them. So there's no penalty. There brings us to here, over, there, there. And there you see now with more points, I'm actually a lot more capable in massaging or sculpting the flows I'm actually looking for. There, that's actually not too bad. Beautiful. Maybe a little bit more in. This can be pushed out a little bit more so the back area is nice and round. You can delete points when you have too many, by the way. That's why I said, if you want simply from the beginning, add more points, because later when you notice that you have too many, we can simply remove the point count. Very good. Okay, I think this is a really nice shape. So what can we do with the shape? Well, we can select it and extrude it out. So now we have kind of like a, a linear extrusion of this profile. But I would like this end cap to be of a different shape. So if I would like to use the loft, then I need another profile. What will be very easy is by selecting the sketch, go then to the move command, and we bring this over to, let's say 25 inches as a copy. Very good. Select the sketch of the pencil with a finger double tap. So we zoom onto it and I will go ahead now and delete a few points. And then sculpt this a little bit. For example, like this. Okay, very nice. And now I will make 
a copy because if I select these two sketches and make a loft, you see while it is a nice loft, it is only, well, one half of our model. I would like this loft to go to the other side. So I need a copy. Select the sketch, go to more, and then mirror. Select the image or the Y axis. Originals on, yes, done. Very good. I will hide actually the image. There we are. And then I will make a loft there. Very good. Yeah, it's not too bad. When we take a look at this from the side, this looks, let's say, good. When we take a look from the top, the bottom part is actually quite nice. We can see, however, here at the front, so the top area looks like a, an S line, like it wiggles a little bit. So I would like this to be more um, convex. So these left and right points have to go further down or seen from the side, this curve has to go more to the inside. So that means we have to adjust our sketch a little bit. There, so this sketch here in the back, I will delete simply to make sure when I modify this sketch, I can modify it and then I make a copy and then the result will be the same. So here again, I simply select individual CVs, move them down and sculpt the shape a little bit. The bottom part, I keep the same. I don't really move these points. You will see actually that then the side sketch nicely overlays with the center sketch. Very good. So let's see how this one works. Same process, select a sketch, more, mirror, copy, done. Click, 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 and loft. Let's do a top view again. Yeah, that's getting better. This is less aggressive, but it's still noticeable. And we can take a look at the site. That's actually also not bad. Very good. Okay, so how can we now fix some of these problems? So for example, here now I said I would like this to belly out more, same here. This has to be a nice, kind of like a C. So that means we need to add what's called guided curves or rails. I have currently three profiles which we can loft and the software will kind of like try its best to make a transition. With added guides, we can, well, guide the, the software how to create the surface, force it more into a boundary. To create actually these guides, this is a really nice process. So somewhere I just make a sketch. On the sketch, just a line, I will create a construction plane through edge at an angle, an angle, not angel. And there it is. I'll make this horizontal. Then this line I can delete. This construction plane, I move up a little bit. I can see where here it intersects with my curve. Very good. I can bring this in a little bit. And to make these planes not so big, I can also scale it down with the scale command. Now, here comes the trick. With a pencil, select this plane with a finger, double tap. And then let's zoom out a little bit. And do you notice that on the right and the left side, you see uh, three magenta points. These are actually the points where this plane intersects with these sketches. So that means these are snapping targets. Now I go to spline. This time now I switch to fit and I draw from the one to the other to the last. Beautiful. Okay. I will select now again my three loft profiles and then the guided curve and say loft. Let's take a look. You see, much, much better. 
When we go to the back, however, now we can see that what's happening to the back, this has now this interesting wave line. Why did this happen? This is actually very normal and to be expected. Think about it this way. I have this profile that should be lofted to this profile, should be lofted to this profile, and then we run this along this line. Think about like a roller coaster. It's like one track, so it follows it. But we actually would like it not to just linearly follow one path. We want to follow, make it follow another path too. So we need actually in the back now a guided curve too. So I can select this plane, double tap on it. So I go back onto this sketching plane. And then with the fit point curve, draw another set. There we are. So let's see how this works. There we are. Beautiful. Very nice. Okay. I would like to add one more sketch. So I will make a copy of this construction plane, bring this over, bring this up, then I rotate this. This should be, this should have a good orientation. Maybe a tick more like this. Very nice. Then this body I will hide for the moment. Select this plane with a finger double tap. Fit point curve from there to there to there. Very nice. What's actually really nice about the fit point curve, and uh, I think I didn't actually say why did I use the fit point curve versus the spline. If you're not noticing this, actually the fit point curve runs through points, which is why it is so useful in this case. The CV curve would not run through it. So if I would add a control point, you see, it's actually too short. So that's the reason why here in this case, we use the fit point curve. The other benefit of the fit point curve is it has handles we can use and expand or shrink. So I'm going to do it this way. And in case everything will work now, let's take a look. There we are. Now we have actually a bench where the backrest is nice and white. How cool is that? Now we can compare. Do I like this model or do I like this model? I might actually not like either. So I will go ahead and adjust this a little bit. I don't want it to be too wide and I also don't want this to be so narrow. So this will be nice. One, two, three. Guided lofts, rails, there we are. Yeah, this actually looks, this looks more harmonious. Very nice. Cool, okay. So I would say actually we found now our, um, I would say, final result. And we're ready actually to do the last piece. How can we core this out? This is actually very easy. To, to create the slotted effect from the front, we need to create a sketch that, well, cuts the grooves out. And before we do this, we need to core out the piece. So I select the left and the right face, go to shell, two inches for the material. That's good. I have an unfortunate detail here. When we go one inch, this might be not really strong enough. Go two. Okay. So when I said unfortunate, you see, because we expanded the shape out, it actually created this a little bit of a thicker part, but maybe actually I will go with it. Could also be interesting how this looks. When I turn this off, let's take a look at our first body. You will see probably there we will not have this effect. Not as much. It's actually there, a little 
longer, but not as deep into it. Okay. Let's go back to this. I will hide everything else. So we can focus really what we have here. And now I can think about how do we slot this one out. And the sketch engine in shape here is really effective in creating a grid to do this task. So I will create myself here a nice white line. Then I will get this line down to here. I will do the same on the other side. And I'm making all these measurements here right now more via eyeballing, following my feeling. Then this I will bring in, bring this in. Very good. Okay. Now here comes the trick. I go one over. So three inches in. I would like to have actually, how could I say that, uh, a volume or like cuts which are only one inch uh, wide. So I do one inch here and then I go down and then I would like to have planks which are two inches thick. So you see how I'm drawing actually this detail here right now. This was actually wrong. Yeah, sketch engine is so easy. Also with the snapping, you see snapping here is very useful when we have to correct something. There we are. Okay. This line, you know, I will bring actually down because later this will define, let me see, uh, we have to actually define the area we cut away and the area we keep. Okay, so no, this is actually first correct up there. Okay, good. So then let's actually select these lines because I don't want to have to draw everything by hand. I can also make myself a copy of multiple elements like this and then copy and move this over to here. I snapped this already to the correct position. Right here, I have few lines which are incorrect. So I need to update this. There we are, very good. And then I will go to one line here and keep it at this. So this is actually a symmetrical piece. I could continue the sketch to the other side. I can, however, just keep it here. Um, because what we later will do is we will remove half of our design, model only on half, and then when this is done, we bring this over to the other side. Okay, so this means that, for example, this line, I will bring over now here to there. Okay, very good. So if I go into a 3D view and I select this and I do a cut, there we can see, okay, so this is actually what it is cutting. Um, not too bad. The only problem is the thin pieces we see, that's actually what I would like to keep. Okay, so we might have to change the way how we do our sketch. I can select the sketch with a finger double tap. Then I go into this view. It's really nice, actually, the model is shaded. And we might have to adjust and move things around a little bit. So, no problem. Here's actually a really smart trick. You see how I make these lines selected and then equal. And I do the same with these lines here on top. I have to zoom in a little bit more. There we are. 
and equal. Very good. So what I need to do is, this is actually what remains and this is what remains. So let's bring this one down. Very good. So when this remains, and no, no, this piece is actually cut out, this remains. So this I will bring over to here. There we are. Bring this one up. And yeah, okay. Now I figured out where I possibly made a little bit of a problem. These lines here, I will select and these actually go up and this here, this goes down. There, very good. And here I will connect this and bring this over. Very good. Yeah, this is now actually the correct layout. Now you might ask yourself, why did I actually set these elements to equal? I'd like to show you one thing. So I lock this point because this is the outside point. I do not want this to move. Check out what happens when I give this a dimension. This here all now one. You see how everything uh, grew together. Watch what happens if I make these two. This all now expanded. You see how I flipped actually the position. This is actually why the, the equal command I love working so much, particularly when I have to create patterns like this. It's very useful. And this point I will bring up to there. There we are. Very good. This technically speaking is this divided by two. It's just half a piece. Okay, so let's see one more time. A quick cut, okay. So you cut, but I would like to have only the intersecting volume. There, there we are. Okay, good. So this seems to work. I un made an undo because I will extrude this completely out as a new um, a new body, sorry, I clicked union, I meant new body, there we are. And then this body and the back, I will extend, very good. Okay, now this body and this body, I will make an intersect. It is up to you to make a copy of this. If you would like to, I will do. So I have a backup piece. So you and you intersect. You could also keep originals off, by the way. That's an automated way. Very nice. The sketch we can hide. So this looks good. Now, because this is 50% via mirror, I can bring this other piece over. And you see even the center piece is nice and the same. Cool. Okay, so this would work, which means I can go back. No, I can have a little bit of fun and round specific edges, the inside, the outside here, I would like to be one inch of a rounding. Nice and big, that is good. And you see here the cog, when I click it, I would like to switch the fillet from G1 to G2. This creates actually a nicer, more perfect rounding. The distance here in between these two lines I always select is exactly one inch. And the reason why I select those is I'm going to round actually these edges. because I'm curious how this will look when we turn actually 
the flat part more into a half circle. There, yeah, nearly done. Okay, so when the distance is one inch, the radius for the fillet then should be half an inch. And this should be G1, this is good. Okay, let's quickly do the same on the back side. So number one, I think if we go to show hidden edges, we might also be able to select all the edges then this way because we can see through the model. That's a very nice helper, so I don't have to rotate my view all the time. There we are. 0.5, very good. Beautiful. And then I will select on front. Now be careful that we do not select an edge that's in the inside. I will round this just a little bit because having these sharp edges is not necessarily very comfortable to sit on. Takes a moment. Yeah, there we are. Let's turn actually this off. Very nice. Cool. Whole piece, select mirror, go to here. Make a copy, there we are. And after we made the copy, then we can select both and do a union. Takes a moment and there we are. So that's the process, how you can create these very organic looking furniture pieces and then slot it with the loft command, guided rails and then Boolean cuts and that's the magic to it. Now to continue playing with it, this is a symmetrical piece, the center sketch, left and right sketch. Play with it, like make a, a variation of multiple very individually sculpted uh, profiles, lofted, be playful with your guided rails. I find this uh, modeling actually, these types of furniture elements very enjoyable because they can be so creative. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good day.